Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode here on the Hermitcraft Mesa Fired server, playing some vanilla Minecraft once again. Gotta say, I love going back and forth between modded and vanilla. It creates a real balance, which I really do like. But we're gonna start this episode off with some negatives. What? <laughs> I wanna have a little bit of a moan. Yes, I need to get something off my chest. I upload videos, you guys know that, but I upload videos using Firefox. And when I choose the video I want to upload, most of the time it goes, nah, we're not going to do that. And I have to try three or four times in a row to get it to upload the video. A little bit annoying, so I decided to download Google Chrome and gave it a go on there. And what happens is you upload the video and then the page inside of Chrome crashes internally and you have to reload it and <laughs> you have to re-upload the whole video. It's so silly. Why can't it just work? Uh, anyway, that doesn't matter. I'm trying to upload videos while I record and it's not going too well. This right here is a bridge that we're going to build. If you saw the last episode, we discussed our plans for the future. We wanted to build a diagonal bridge going over to this area where we'll be building our snow farm. And to challenge myself, didn't want to do a one-to-one -one diagonal like that. Decided to do a three-to-one. So for every three blocks we go in this direction, we go one across. And this is where it's going to go because we spotted this nice little sort of peak and plateau. There's two of them here and they seem like a good spot so it's going to go across like this very flat all the way to this bit here and then it's going to go down as well so we're going to keep the three to one ratio and go down <laughs> as well which is going to be really challenging to build and a lot of fun but we will start off by focusing on the snow farm which is going to go somewhere around here so i imagine the path will probably go out into this space and where it's relatively flat somewhere around here is where we construct our snow farm so we're going to plop down um, a few thingies over here. I have been preparing. There's lots of materials that we're going to need to build this. So I'm just going to have to get myself uh, ready to do this. Do we have our old snowman over here, by the way? Because I didn't bring any snow with me. Uh, no, he's dead. He's gone. That's slightly worrying. Where did that guy go? And there's no snow left in here. Well, looks like i got to make a little trip to get some. Time to rise and shine, isn't it, Piggy? Yes. Oh, I made a new friend, by the way. This guy was roaming around out here. Haven't really checked out how fast it is or anything. And I've decided the place to go is just over here. The reason why is because that would be an eye shot. It wasn't loaded until I walked over there, but now it is loaded. Not quite sure what's going on there. I think that has something to do with your own render distance and the server's render distance. Like, if the server's is 10 and yours is 20, when you start walking in the other direction, it's not going to unload till you hit 20, I think, maybe. I don't know what I'm talking about. But this spot right here will do, I think, because that's when this thing started to load. And it's kind of one of the reasons we want to build out here is to sort of connect things together a little bit. But let's get into the technical stuff. So here's what I've been thinking. And let's grab some hoppers, first of all. We are going to create a lot of snow very quickly. And there is a limit to how much these hoppers can move snow around. So I'm hoping that four hoppers will be enough for the amount of snow that we're going to create. And in order to make this work, I need some powered rails. I did bring some powered rails with me. And we will need some fence posts too. So the idea here is that we want to collect as much as we can as quick as we can. And the way we're going to do that is with these powered rails having some hopper minecarts on them. We're going to have three in total. And maybe I could squeeze four into here, but that's when it starts making a lot of noise because these minecarts are going to be riding the track that they're on. So we're going to put in one, then another one there, and then they're going to get pushed either side like that. And then we put one in the middle-ish. That is the middle-ish right there. If we nudge it about a bit. Yeah, that's pretty good, right? So three hopper minecarts connected to four hoppers. Basically, the speed at which these can pick up items will probably be our bottleneck unless they can go a little bit faster. I didn't really think about what block I wanted to put on top of this, actually. That's right, cow. You walk away. You saw me pull out the sword. I think we're going to go with iron because it will mix with the snow very well. It's a nice industrial colour. And it's on top of here that we're going to be building our snowmen. So the way that we want to do this is have two of them because in the old game, I don't know if this still works, but you can basically shovel between the edges of two and you'd be breaking the snow on the left and the snow on the right as well. So by having two snow golems up here, I'm hoping we will get um, this a lot faster. Do you know what? I think I'm actually going to use the pumpkin texture a lot here. I think that would be pretty interesting to mess around with. So we will build some walls here out of pumpkins and it kind of gives me an iron golem vibe now as well. And then we'll put some glass at the front. So the glass is going to be at this height because we need a gap in which to aim through at. And 
you know, the snow to drop down. And now we need to place in our snow golems. But before we do that, what we're going to do is put some trap doors in this area. We need to put a temporary block there. Put the trap door on that side and one on this side as well. The reason we're doing this is because we need to keep the snow golems on either side from one another. If they try and walk over, it might cause some issues. So by doing that, we should be okay. So I'm going to put uh, this right here. What way do I have to nudge the guy? Let's open that up for now. Right, before he starts moving, give him a light nudge. Boom, and down he goes. Now he's trapped in there forever. Actually, I better leave that open. Let's now go and do that on the other side. So I sort of need to walk across that gap, which is why I might want to open it. Um, but we will do it like this. A little nudge. little nudge for you. In you go. Excellent. we now got two of them trapped in there. And I'm going to give them a roof. I thought that was iron I was placing. Let's give them a roof made out of iron. Very cool. And now if we can make up a shovel, I can show you what I'm talking about. So if we stand here and aim upwards into the top corner, imagine this block wasn't here, we'd then be aiming at that one. So the idea is that you hold down click, and it works, you hit both of them, excellent. I had a feeling that might not work anymore. Now straight away I've spotted another problem, which is that snowballs are coming out the front here. So extra hoppers at the front are probably going to be needed. But otherwise, I mean, that's pretty good. I am now wondering, since we got them locked in this space, we don't need a block there or here. Maybe some hoppers on those sides as well would work out. But where did the ones down below go? It looks like they went into my inventory, maybe. How full are these things? They're pretty full up. If I'd have kept that going, I reckon... Oh, I don't know. They're doing a pretty good job of getting rid of the snow, aren't they? And then it's all going to come back here. Excellent. It looks like that actually works really well. Okay, I'm going to play around with this a bit more, do some testing and see if we can get it so it starts to back up. Another thing just crossed my mind, you might be wondering if we can hit the snow golem, so I'm going to continue holding down click and we're going to aim it in front of the golem. Because our first action was trying to hit a block, it means that's only what we can do when we hold down click. And that works with a lot of things. For example, when you're digging in the nether, you know, you might accidentally hit a pigman, but if you'd already been clicking on the netherrack, then that wouldn't happen. Been having some internet troubles. As I was testing, I ran into an issue which seems to have corrected itself. This guy on the left stopped placing snow down below, which was kind of irritating. And then I was thinking perhaps a piston will, you know, sort of realign him and make him place... Oh, and it does that as well. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. And quick, get up there and... No. <laughs> uh, because we powered the block next to the trapdoor. Yikes. So those buttons are actually going to have to go all the way over here. Which should be okay. I was kind of picturing this having a column there and it being quite narrow, but we can make it a bit wider. Actually, we could just put the button down below because we're going to have glass there. And I did sort of want to put glass there and there as well. Anyway, I tested it. So a full shovel and a half and the snowdrops start to come out the front and land down here. So this is where I think we need to add in some hoppers to point into the hopper minecarts and they will pick up what falls down below. Um, the thing is then, where does the player want to stand? We've sort of been looking up and I talked about it potentially hitting the snowman, which it won't actually do if you click on the block first. We put it at this height here, now you're looking down. If we went up yet again, you could walk up to this thing and you could still use it just fine. So there's sort of like options and decisions to be made here and I'm not sure what one it is we're going to go with. Do you know what I really dislike doing in this game? Rebuilding stuff. We might have to rebuild this a little bit, I don't know, because this could ideally be lowered down a bit, but I am thinking terraforming around the outside might be better. Our entrance is literally going to be right here, and I'm not going to make it a surprise, I'm sort of planning that we build a giant snowman around this thing, right? So its base is going to be a little bit circular, and that means that it's going to be quite big, dictated by the entrance to the end here. And what I'm looking at doing around the back here is just rearranging the hoppers to point out to the side. So if we end up doing that, we might as well rebuild this whole thing. So then the items are going to go up, two on this side, two on that side, into water streams, which will flow over a whole bunch of chests, which we're going to have lined up like this. They're going to be double chests, three blocks high. I don't know why that went there. Pretty sure I placed it on the side of that block. <laughs> And then this will be our little room. We will have some lighting coming from below those trap doors as well. There we go. And then it will just be a little compact room like this. You walk in, chests on either side. That's where all the snowballs will end up. And then you can use the thing directly in front of you. If anything ever messes up, you've got those buttons to fix it a little bit. And you can see a gap through there when you do that. So we probably need a block at the back here as well. I don't know if you can hear it, but there is a low rumble of minecarts right here. 
they're actually hitting each other and going back and forth, which is kind of what I wanted to avoid. Anyway, let's chuck an item in here because a little bit of a problem. You can see the item makes its way to the top, but if we want to put water on top of that dropper, then there's a torch next to it. So how's that going to work? I think what we need to do is then have a dropper facing this way, and that should be powered by the same torch. Let's chuck an item in. I can see it. There it is over there. Excellent. So in front of that is where we're going to have a water stream go around to the side. And that might be a little bit of a problem because the item can end up on top of that slab. Hmm, may have to put stairs there or something. You know, you've got to think about where the items can go. The slabs are there because there's chests underneath, by the way. Um, yeah, so the water would then go across and wrap round over these hoppers, which go into the chests over here. And what was the other thing that I wanted to mention? Oh yeah, definitely worth moving this down, you know. No need to take shortcuts. When we move it down, it's going to be a lot better overall. And also, there are now some iron trapdoors here in the middle. I thought that looked a little bit better, actually. And those guys seem to be looking at something behind. Um, I had an idea. I had an idea which I'm not really sure I want to do or not. And my items are in this chest. I brought with me some shears. You probably know what I'm going to do now. Don't you? Where are the shears? Aha! There they are. What we could do is take the pumpkin off the head of the... Snowman. Bam. <laughs> that is a really derpy looking face right there. I think I'm going to keep the pumpkin on. I think they look cooler with the pumpkin on. And now that this room is all white and we've got the orange at the back, it kind of signifies the ratio a little bit of white to orange on the snowman. So we're keeping that. So heading back up here, we might have a little bit of a problem. If this dropper were facing forward, there would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight blocks. That's where the water would run out. So the items wouldn't go all the way over here. Now, we can't really put ice in because of the way the iron is in the way. So having a little uh, swap over bit where you have a slab and the water starts again won't really work here because you need ice to do that. So what I'm thinking is perhaps we can just face this upwards like that and do all the water at this height, but we might encounter the same problem. It's going to be 1, 2, uh, 3, 4... Five, six, seven. Yeah, somewhere around here there needs to be a little exchange. We need to use a little bit of ice. It's probably going to be quite tricky. Well, maybe not. Maybe it doesn't have to be tricky at all because the water can drop down and then flow off in a different direction. So we can put glass around here. Okay, like that. And yes, it all flows to the correct spot. Excellent. But then the question is, will the item get stuck on that bit there? Hmm, it's sort of got pulled around the corner a little bit. Let's just throw one in at the back here. That actually seems pretty good to me. Ooh, do you see what I mean? When it goes all the way down to the bottom, it might have a little bit of trouble. Right, if we throw it like that, it gets caught over in this side, but you see eventually it makes its way across, so no, that isn't going to be a problem. Excellent. Look at this, big block of gravel on the ground. I'm thinking, hmm, that's odd. Someone built that. Where did that come from? You can sort of see where it's fallen out of the area up above. Oh, I do like it. So it's done. This is it. Going to give it a little test together. And I think I made a bit of a mistake here, but I don't think it's too bad. I'll explain why in a moment. We won't do the longest of tests, but we will just stand here for a second. And we're hearing clicking. I thought I set those up so we wouldn't hear clicking. Huh. Well, I'll have to check that out. Anyway, that should be enough. So, I've got a feeling that they won't be able to actually send the items up as quick as they come into the system down here, which then means that all of those hopper minecarts and the hoppers are like a buffer for inventory space. Yeah, if we right-click on there, you can see that it has been filled up. In fact, it's slowly filling up. I'm really not sure how to measure this stuff. But either way, the system works, and if you're over here and you see that loads of snowballs are starting to gather here, maybe that's a sign that you need to go and craft it, because here's what I'm thinking. It's all good standing here, hitting this thing over and over again, but you also need to put the time into crafting up as well, so you've got to take them out of the chest. So if, yeah, if, if this is getting backed up, then you might as well be crafting some blocks. So we are mostly going to be spending the entire episode working on that project. I think that is very likely. Although it depends how long it takes me to finish it. Maybe we'll have time to do something else as well. And yes, I'm tearing down this gold thing right here. Gold sign. Sign is the word that I was looking for there. And the reason why is because I just wanted to come over here, take a break from doing that project for a moment, and let you know that me and Iskow had a little chat about this right here. I should have actually shown you it first, you know. 
he didn't really like this sign here. To be fair, I don't like it either. It sort of spoils the view of the area. You've got this nice open area and the gold sign just sticks right in the middle and he wants to like renovate this area as you can see he has been renovating this shop right here i'm not sure what it's going to sell now but it looks very devilish and this guy <laughs> i love the expression on his face got a raised eyebrow sir butcher there but yeah we're tearing this down so if you see it you know missing in the future i thought you should should hear it from me because Iskow was going to tear this down i don't think he's been on the server since we had a chat though so i figured hey i'll just tear it down and uh, save him the effort. I believe he may also be rebuilding the entrance. We discussed the position of it a little bit. I think it would have been much better if uh, there had been a path leading down from somewhere around here. That would have looked really cool. Instead of sort it goes round to the side, but there you go. It's been opened up. Let's check it out from over here because this was the view it was obstructing. And yeah, you get much more of a sense of the area now. You can see a few of the different buildings as you walk into it, which is really cool. Anyway, we're now going to head back over to the snow farm project and we're going to start working on the outside of what we've built so far. So stage one of the exteriors looks something like this. And here is the second part of the exterior and here is the third and final part of this structure I think you know what this is oh wow what is that giant thing over there hey I'm really glad we walked over here to be fair walking is pretty much the only way to get here actually I could have flown yes I could have flown over here but I'm glad I saw it from here because this kind of lines up with the bridge right and I was going to Put a face on this guy. I was going to put it on this side over here, which is currently the entrance. And actually, we should have it over here. And I think that'll help us solve two problems, because the other problem that we have is the entrance, which is over on that side. So if the entrance were here, it might be a little bit different. Let's walk up to it. This thing is pretty big, right? <laughs> and yeah, you can see that the entrance is three wide, and then this entrance is two wide, and it's all a little bit silly, really. How are we going to combat that problem? Well, what if the entrance was actually over here? These blocks are not necessary. And then we walk the player around, or the hermit, <laughs> walk them around to the other side. So that's your new entrance, and then you have to take a right-hand turn. It's going to be hard to sort of cover all of this up without making it feel a little bit narrow and unnecessary, but then you can come around and turn in here. It's probably not going to be a very grand walk into this place, is it? So let's cover this side up, so that's no longer going to be the entrance, and that takes away the three wide to two wide problem. And what is now going to be next? I'm going to climb up this thing and place a few blocks. Okay, i got some blocks of coal here. Let's put one in the middle, one down there, one up there. This might look awkward if we don't do it properly. I think what we're going to do is place blocks underneath like this. Aha, you can see a part of a smile. Let's finish that smile. And then the eyes, I reckon we'll put just in that space there. They might be a little bit too close together for this. Oh no, I think that looks okay. And then, what do you need for the nose? A carrot. <laughs> Got some carrot blocks right here. Orange hard and clay. Yes, I know. Let's go back down and look at it from afar. Oh, that is actually quite spectacular. You know what that guy is? We built a giant snowman. I tell you what, a week ago from today, I would never have thought I was building a giant snowman. But there it is. I think the base may have been a little bit big. What I would have done here is we've got an, a big base that gets a little bit smaller and then a little bit smaller again. It's actually pretty cool. I think it worked out really well. But you know what we need now? We need some arms on this guy, man. He's got no arms. It's a nice view from up here, and we're a lot closer to that area than I thought we would be. You know, this is going to be visible the entire time, so better put some smiles on people's faces. And there's a few snow layers up here. I think it's been briefly snowing in between me sleeping in the bed. So snow layers will settle on this thing. Let's go and have a look at it from over here. I was going to say down below, but actually from the hill on the side should be good. Look at that! He's got some arms now. So they are a little bit... Derpy, a little bit wacky. I was thinking, you're going to stick sticks in the side of this guy and they're both going to be unique, so they're not symmetrical and they're a little bit derpy looking. And that's fantastic. I love it. I love the smile he's got right there as well. Just a silly, derpy old snowman. And I've also extended the path a little bit. I feel like this was a bad idea to keep that three to one thing going just across here. I'll probably make this look a little bit more natural and varied. And then the path just leads into this bit right here. 
and what you will see is all of this up here which I was going to hide I forgot to do and now I'm thinking it's kind of cool to look up and see that so maybe we'll extend this glass out a little bit and you just walk around the corner like this I think this area here needs a light so maybe I'll put a lantern somewhere around here and then into the farm you go simple stuff Oh yeah, you also can't put these path blocks down here with the trapdoors above them, which kind of sucks. Even though they open up that way, uh, it won't let you put them there. So I had dirt, and now it's grown to grass. I don't think that's going to work. I think we're going to replace that with some iron. <laughs> it's hard to keep a straight face when you're looking at this thing. Uh, but part of this project was about coming away from this area and building a little path over here as well. And I wanted it to be an eye shot of this build, just to tie things together. And I think the power of paths is that if you follow them, you're going to find stuff, right? So this path is now going to lead you over to that place over there. And I thought I would just make do with what I have on me. And that reminds me, I wanted to check in this chest to see if I had any bones. No, usually you accumulate them being out here where it's not lit up with torches. Because at night time the skeletons come after you. But anyway, the path goes this way. I was thinking with some bone meal we could add a little bit of grass around the edges. Which is nice for detail. But I think the important thing here is not to go overboard. This is quite a long path. It's never going to get used too much. And it could be easy to spend a lot of time on this. So I wanted to do something very simple. And so I decided to just make do with the materials that I had on hand. Which was a little bit of oak wood and some jungle wood as well. So where it slopes down here, rather than building something a little bit more complicated. We've actually gone for something really quite simple here and when I step to the side, which I will do right now, <laughs> you will see we put in a little bit of jungle wood. Not the most glamorous thing you've ever seen, but it works. I think it works really cool. And now I'm thinking, how do we get all the way up there? There is this nice big flat bit on the side that I feel like we could take advantage of. So probably what we will do is go up there and look for a spot where we can bring the path down like this through the side of the mountain and then we could have some little openings like windows going through to the outside and that could go all the way down to here, maybe turn around, come back across and then something like that. So this is kind of perfect. The path that leads up here is very narrow and rickety which I like and it uses jungle wood which we just happen to have some on us so we can craft our own slabs and down here is the path that leads to Wells' base. It looks like he's decorating the path for various builds and so this little path comes off the side and makes its way up here and I really like the way it weaves between the snow. I think snow would be able to settle on the coarse dirt. Hopefully it doesn't do that because it's really nice how it breaks between the snow. Makes it feel like a very worn out path but one that's used a lot. So anyway this bit right here is literally the side as you can see it's very straight and flat isn't it for a, for a mountain and this is where we're going to have to go down so I'm thinking a few slabs around here will just sort of ease a path downwards and I don't really want to do oh wait a minute yeah this will be fine okay so as the path goes down like this we're going to create little slits in the side and there'll be like windows to out there and that'll allow you to see the path from you know elsewhere Choices, choices, choices. Do we go for the moody effect or the practical effect? If I remove that block, there is a torch all the way back there. So it's not the brightest light you can receive, but it's quite a lot compared to the darkness. And this is how it's going to tail off as well. A little bit of a drop, but then there's a steady slope path down here. This place is pretty cool at night. In the daytime, it doesn't feel quite the same. And this is the way down. Yes, you hit your head each and every time, didn't you? I think I'm going to push that all back by one. And then there's this opening here, which I could have filled in, but I felt like keeping the natural thing was the way to go. And let's just throw an ender pole and take a look at it from afar, from over here. Bam, there we are. And that actually looks really cool. I do like that. Let's you know that there's a path there, just a, the right amount of light. What I did is made it so that the windows alternate from where the light source is. So the light source is further away and it's sort of in the middle each time. So you get a low light level coming out of there. That looks really good. But now what we've got to do is turn it around, come down here and meet up with this part of the path. I have really, really enjoyed this project. It's been a lot of fun so far, but what I've liked the most is actually doing this really simple part where we just work on the path. And the reason I think I've enjoyed it so much is because it's just been a very simple and straightforward building, which we don't really get to do most of the time, right? We're always doing these big projects, and sometimes it's nice to just come along and place some stone bricks down without having to think about it. So 
Our path now goes up around here, and it's kind of weird showing you it in this order because I built it in the reverse. So if we go up through here, you'll see there's a bit of a cave area, and this just happened to be where I poked out of the side. You see, this lines up with the path over there, right? And so I was going to go downwards here, but we opened up into this little bit of a cave. So the steps turn around just down here, so it's quite the walk down. And then we've continued with the lighting thing through the side there, so it has the same sort of mood. You still hit your heads on the stone as you walk through, and then you come down into this little cave. The torches sort of highlight this bit, and actually we could probably put a couple more torches just over here as well, like that. So that is the path connected up to the giant snowman, and it's a bit dark, moody, and it's raining around here. Let's, let's get somewhere a little warmer and brighter. Much better, much better. No rain, bright skies, and oh, what's this, a nether portal? Yeah, I was thinking that sometimes when you want to head over here, you don't actually want to use the path. Jeez, I spent all this time building this path and this bridge to the snowman, and then I've gone and put an obsidian portal in, but whatever. We'll hook that up on the other side at another time. Right now, for the end of this video, I've got something pretty cool that I want to show you. Oh my days, does this look terrible or what? We're in the nether hub right now, and this is... One of the worst Minecraft experiences I've had in a long time. We have low frame rates and, oh dear God, <laughs> no sound. All of this is actually deliberate. My friend MC gave me a great idea on how to AFK whilst playing the mod pack, which is something that I couldn't previously do. And what he suggested doing is setting up an AFK profile. So let me click right here and bam, all of a sudden you can see my desktop. We're playing in an incredibly tiny window and the reason why we're doing this is because it means the computer has so much less work to do when it's rendering the game. And I'm just going to activate the blaze farm here because we're going to do some AFK sessions. So we've got the frame rate turned down to 5 FPS. We've got an incredibly low resolution. And then we're using Optifine as well. Let's make it full screen again for a second. Which means you have all of these extra options in the video settings. All of these things that you can turn um, all the way down. For example, animations. Everything has been turned off. You know, Our graphics are on fast. We are basically trying to use as little as the computer as we can. And this profile has also been set to half a gig of memory. Which should mean I'll be able to AFK with it while playing on the mod pack, as this is now going to use very, very little resources from the computer. So I can just stand here doing some AFKing. Oh, another thing I did was turn the FOV down as well, so it has less vision or space like to render in the game, and it looks so silly. And that's it from me, this one, your 5 FPS Asuma here, signing you out, saying thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, leave a like, and if you're into AFKing at farms, consider making one of these profiles as well. It'll allow you to have one Minecraft running using very little resources, and another one running, uh, playing like normal, hopefully. So hopefully that works out for you. Anyway, thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.